First parish that I served, I tried to introduce the canting of the Psalms. After we'd done it for a few weeks, a gentleman at the door informed me that he didn't much care for this new practice. He says, I don't know, it just sounds so Jewish. He said, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> Our text today, we come to Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying, take heart, get up, he He's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we've gathered here to encounter a word from you. No mere mortal words will do. Be gracious to our seeking in these moments, we pray. In the name of the word made flesh. Amen. Just before we get to our text today, Jesus has announced that he is heading to Jerusalem. The disciples get pretty excited about this. James and John assume that this is a crusade to go to the city and take power. They make their way up to the front of the line. When Jesus sees them, he asks, what do you want me to do for you? What a, a piercing question to come from Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? How would you respond to that? Would you tell Jesus about your own crusade to become a pastor or a scholar? Or your crusade to find someone to take away the loneliness? Or maybe your crusade is just to find a crusade worthy of your years. What do you want me to do for you? James and John responded by saying, Lord, when you come into glory, can we sit on your left hand and your right hand? And Jesus responded by saying, wow, that's a really bad answer. <laughs> this is my paraphrase, but... By the time they get as far as Jericho, we're told that a, a large crowd had begun to follow Jesus because they know he's on his way to Jerusalem. Jerusalem has seen a lot of crusades and they're not gonna miss this one because they also know that Jesus is going there and Jesus can do the most miraculous things and maybe when he takes power, he can help them as well. And frankly, if we're gonna find ourselves in this text, it's as a part of this crowd because we too have yearnings, and dreams, and goals, and we, we would like some help from Jesus. But Jesus has his own mission in mind for going to Jerusalem, and it's not to help us out. The mission is that he is dying, literally dying to forgive us there, to give us mercy, most of all for all the damage we've done on our little crusades. As they're leaving Jericho then and, and making their way up to Jerusalem, 
they pass a blind man named Bartimaeus who cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd tries to get this beggar to, to quiet down. Don't stop Jesus now. He's finally getting somewhere. But he won't stop. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's fascinating that this is the first time in Mark's gospel that Jesus is given the designation of being the son of David. The Savior, the Messiah, the one who can save us even from ourselves. And ironically, the disciples who had sight could not see that. But the blind man named Bartimaeus could see exactly who Jesus was. And the next words of the text are among the most important in all of Scripture. And Jesus stood still. Jesus, the incarnation of God in the flesh, stops the crusading crowd to stand still in front of this one man who, who knows who he is, and who cries out for mercy. God is never too busy with the crowd to keep God from stopping, standing still in front of anyone who asks for mercy. <clears throat> we miss this so often because we are preoccupied with living busy lives. We love busyness. Busyness is our contemporary idol. <clears throat> Try standing still on a sidewalk in New York. You'll get mowed over. Because we're, we're people on the move. Out of my way. I've got people to see. I've got places to go. I'm on a mission here. I've got stuff to do. Oddly, we now even affirm people by saying, you look tired. You must be really busy. Right. Yeah, I've got a lot going on. Nobody wants to hear, you look well-rested. <laughs> no, I can't be well-rested. I've got too much to do. I can't rest. I'm a busy person. Busyness is a lazy thing. It avoids the hard work of attending to the soul's yearning for mercy. To ask for help from Jesus is not close to praying for mercy. To ask for help is to ask for a boost in reaching up to our own goals. But to pray for mercy is to place our lives in the Savior's hands. When my daughter was a little girl, we were living in Washington, D.C. In an afternoon that I had alone with her, I, I took her on the metro down to the Supreme Court, and we stood there in front of the majestic steps in front of the incredible building of the Supreme Court, and as I held her little hand, I said, sweetheart, someday this is where you're gonna work. And as she got older, I prayed for help with my goals for her life. I prayed and prayed for help. Then when she became an adolescent teenager, I stopped praying for help and started praying for mercy. You see the difference? She's now become an extraordinary woman that only God and she could have created without much of my help. It's striking to me that Bartimaeus does not ask Jesus for a few coins. That's what we would have expected of a beggar. That Jesus the rabbi would be an easy mark and it'd be good PR for Jesus to look compassionate in front of the crowd. But no, if, if Bartimaeus had asked for alms, that would have just been asking Jesus to help him become a more successful beggar. Bartimaeus is named in the text. We're told that he's somebody's son, Timaeus. He has a family. He's, he's not defined by this desperate condition of his life of having to beg. He's so much more than that. That's why he cries for mercy and not for help in being a better beggar. He 
He needs his life to be fully restored that he might become fully alive. So standing still in front of Bartimaeus, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Isn't that striking? you got to believe he looked over at James and John first because it's the exact same question that he asked them that they bumbled. What, what do you want me to do for you? And maybe as James and John heard this same question being asked again, maybe it was a mercy for them as well. Maybe they got it this time when they heard Bartimaeus say, let me see again. Maybe they realized that in spite of following Jesus all this time, they, they had never really seen who he is. And maybe that's true for you and me as well. And will be true until our prayers are reduced to, Lord, have mercy. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has made you well. Faith, it's a way of seeing. A way of seeing that the Savior is standing still in front of you. Dying to give you not what you want, but what you need. Mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.